Hey, welcome to Gear Taste. What are these? Questions for Gear Taste. Questions over coffee? Yes. Because I'm having coffee. All right. I guess we're doing questions over coffee. The first question comes from Uri, who asks, what do you use and recommend for solar charging gear? Um, I have not really gotten into solar powered devices as much as I should. Um, that's actually something I've been looking forward to, to getting more into. Um, currently, all I've really got for solar stuff is this Solio charger. Um, I've used this for a couple years now. It's still working really good for me um, for cell phone stuff. So what I do is that I was able to put together, I kind of put it together with one of Solio's devices. So they have, basically you charge this, the suction cup is to mount it to a window or something like that. And you can plug in this adapter, which allows you to plug in a, a device for a phone to, to basically power a phone with a uh, car charger cable. So I like that option because it's, it's completely adapter, or it's, there's no specific adapter for it for your phone. So you can literally use any car charger or 12 volt um, outlet and plug it into this. Um, I also wound up doing this too. I bought this little adapter and this plugs into a AA battery pack. So I can charge batteries this way too. I don't have the little charger in front of me, but so this was my option for plugging into a, a little four pack to charge four AA rechargeable batteries too. So um, I've used this quite extensively. I don't, I really haven't gotten into some of the newer tech that's out there. Um, Goal Zero is where I would look to and that's, I've really researched that stuff quite a bit. Um, we were out at Overland Expo about a year ago and I was looking into actually getting, I guess it almost looks like a little portable generator. So I had considered putting a, a pretty big solar panel on top of my vehicle and then running that to um, the, the charger itself. Um, and then you can actually plug in, you know, a standard outlet into that too. So um, definitely check out Goal Zero. I'll put their website link in the, uh, the, the video description so you can get over to them too. So um, I would recommend a lot of their stuff too. I've personally known people that have used it and have good things to say about it. I don't have any time with it personally yet, but hope to do that in the future. Okay, so our next question comes to us from Twitter, where Josh asks, what are your recommendations for cold weather gear for use in a wide range of temperatures, negative five to 60 degrees Fahrenheit? So what I have been using for a long time now, ever since I got out of the military, is the PCU system. Um, PCU stands for Protective Combat Uniform, and it was developed with the Army and a well-accomplished mountaineer and climber named Mark Twight. Uh, Mark Twight contracted with the Army to help them develop the PCU system. Um, back in the day, there was the, let's see, ECWS, I think, was the original kind of outdoor ensemble for clothing. Uh, it's like the extreme cold weather system. Um, and then you got into SPEAR, which I'll try to remember the acronym for that later, but I, I can't remember what SPEAR stood for. But then it all kind of graduated into the PCU. Um, so what Twight did when he contact, contracted with the Army was he looked at all the kind of commercially available fabrics on the market. They put together a really good ensemble of clothing that could take you down to, you know, negative temperatures and even well below negative five um, and, you know, into warmer temperatures. So um, what I want to do is reference this handy guide that I've had for a while. This is from a company called Quick Point. This is the Protective Combat Uniform uh, basically guidebook um, and I've used this a lot to just as a refresher to to know what to wear in certain climates so the PCU is a seven layer system um, but the most important thing to remember is you're never going to wear all seven layers they're very dependent on what you're doing what kind of activity level you have um, if you're static versus active um, that's the way this guide kind of breaks it down too so you've got static you've got active you've got wet um, and then you've got cold and wet so those are the kind of the conditions that the PCU protects in um, so let me kind of introduce you to the levels first and then I'll kind of get into the chart and it'll make more sense. So um, level one is basically there's two different, there's an A, I guess an A and a non-A. They don't really have an A and a B. So level one is basically 
the whole system is wicking. So the purpose of the PCU is through convection, you are, you're obviously sweating and you want that moisture to dissipate or to get out of the system, not get trapped in it. So level one is just a simple t-shirt and then you've got a pair of boxers too made out of the same material. And this is the, uh, this is the first gen of the PCU. So that's what I'm gonna show you. It's, it's come a long way since then. They're starting to use better fabrics now, but this is the, uh, the original gen one. So level one, then you've got kind of a level 1A, and this kind of gets into um, what you might consider kind of thermal or long underwear. So you've got a long sleeve shirt and then long, long bottoms. That's 1A. Then you've got level two, which is a top and bottom. And this is kind of the waffle pattern stuff. Um, this is actually one of my favorite layers right here, the level two, um, the top, really. I wear this all the time. This is just a great add-on layer. Then you've got bottoms too if you need to layer up with the level two. And then level three gets into an outer jacket. So this is kind of like a fleece layer on the level three. Level four is a wind shirt. So this is a nice lightweight packable wind shirt. And then level five is kind of your, this is kind of your soft shell or your, your outer layer. So it's also got pants with it too. It's a level five pants. And then level six is a dedicated rain suit. So this is your, this is, you know, obviously if you're in the downpour, this is level six. It's got pants with it too. And then you get into your puffy layer or your level seven. And level seven, I don't have the vest, but there's a vest piece too. So there's the jacket, there's, the, you know, the big heavy snow pant looking things. And then you've got a vest that, that adds on to level seven. So now that you've seen all the levels, this will kind of make more sense. So They've got this really handy chart and you can see that kind of the, the different spots that I talked about. So active versus extreme cold weather, cold, wet, static, that type of thing. It tells you what levels to put on. So in this case, you've got an active mission profile. You've got level one on and you've got level five on. So this is cold and wet temperature. It's uh, 45 degrees to 30 degrees Fahrenheit is what this protects in. So you've got level one. So you've got your base layer plus your level five, which is that soft shell jacket and pants. So that's a good example of that condition. Um, so let's take a extreme cold weather here. So extreme cold weather, zero to negative 50, um, you've got level two, you've got level three, and you've got level five and level seven and level seven A. I think seven A is the, uh, the uh, what was it? Not the jacket, but the, uh, the vest. So that's seven A, I believe. So that's extreme. That's kind of the, uh, the spectrum of, of the, uh, the different levels. So I won't keep going through all these different profiles, but just know that it's a layering system. It works really well, um, and I'd highly recommend it. So where can you get the layering system? So being a military contract, there are companies that offer it to the commercial market as well. Um, Beyond Clothing is one of the best examples I can think of right now that who actually manufactures a complete PCU system. So Beyond Clothing has that. They've got the different levels. You can buy it at different price points. Um, and then you can always go to eBay too. I really like shopping on eBay and that's where I've picked up some other clothing items too. Um, they have you know, used PCU stuff. There's people that sell new PCU stuff too. Just go to eBay and type in PCU clothing and you'll probably find all the levels on there. Um, like I said, this is the first generation. There's newer stuff. So I think the newest stuff might, I, I believe it's made by Patagonia. I think that's the newest stuff I've seen. Um, whereas this original stuff and some of the, I guess that would be technically like a Gen 3 now, uh, but like a Gen 2 uh, was made by a company named uh, Haley's. So Haley's made some of that's H-A-L-Y-S. So you can look that up on eBay too, as well as Cirque, S-E-R-K-I. Uh, Cirque Industries actually sells some stuff currently too. I think they've only got like level one and three and maybe seven, one, two, three, seven, maybe something like that. But um, there are definitely a lot of places you can find this stuff. So the PCU system is definitely out there. Um, and it's, I think it's one of the, the best complete systems there is. Um, now, I've really recently gotten into Arcteryx clothing too, and I can't say enough good things about what they've been doing too, um, because these, are, these have become really some of my favorite pieces too. So. Um, Whereas there's no dedicated base layers that I have, I think Arcteryx makes some base layer stuff, but I don't personally have any of that. What I've got is kind of their, I've got an outer shell jacket um, as well as pants. 
So this is the stuff that uh, we were provided when I was in Chamonix climbing uh, for an Arteryx event. There's an article on ITS about it if you kind of want to learn more about this, these particular layers. I have a pretty extensive write-up about it. Um, but I really love their pants. These are Tweev. Um, this is, these are probably my favorite pants. I, I just love the Tweev material. Um, they're flexible. They have some stretch to them, which is great. Um, and then there's kind of a, uh, an insulating layer that they have too. So I think this is the Atom. Um, and I'm forgetting names on some of this stuff. Apologize. But um, I will link to that write-up as well. So just a small example of some clothing. I mean, obviously, you've got some other stuff you can throw in the mix. If you've got camis, that's kind of a, uh, a standalone layer in itself. Um, I, you can kind of mix that in with the PCU system. That little pamphlet actually talks about that, about mixing in kind of your BDU layer as well. So that's a look at some clothing. Sorry it's a little long-winded, but I wanted to explain the PCU system. All right, so the last question over coffee we have comes to us from Tony who asks, what lockpicks do you recommend for a beginner starting out? So uh, we have quite a few different lockpicks available on ITS um, in our store, but what I recommend for starting out is honestly just a pair of standard Bogota picks. So this is the Bogota tool set. Um, what this provides is not only a, a single hump there for single picking, but you also have a triple hump for raking too. And then the rear ends of these picks double as the tension wrench. So we also sell these clear trainers, which, you know, one of the reasons we carry them is not just to sell something. I, this is the way I learned um, how to manipulate a lock too. So what's great about the trainers is that you get to see everything that's going on. So this, this clear container that the plug is in kind of represents the cylinder of the lock. And then the actual keyway is the plug that turns. So when you put the proper key in, you can actually see this rotating and turning. If you put the wrong key in, and it comes with a blank key and two good keys. So the blank key is actually pretty nice because it tells you exactly what the pin stack is doing. So the way this is laid out in a traditional lock, a, a, a pin and tumbler lock, is that you have springs that compress the, the pin stacks down. And when I say pin stack, it's made out of two pins. So the top is the driver pin. So this has five different pin stacks. So this is a five pin lock. And the driver pins are all the same size. So each one of these five different driver pins are the same, the same height. And then the pins below that are called the key pins. And the key pins are what actually make up the lock. So you can see when you put this blank key in, you can actually see the heights of these key pins. And if you look at and compare this key to those, to those pin stacks, you can actually see the, where the different valleys are within the cuts of the key. So again, this is a great way to not only see that, but um, to learn as well. Because what you have to do is the space between the driver pin and the key pin is called the shear line. And you have to line up each pin stack on the shear line to get the plug to turn. So you can see right now, I can't turn this lock, but if I put in the correct key, all those pins line up again, and now I can turn the plug. So again, just a great training tool to use. I mean, you don't have to have one of these, but it really helps. Like I said, that's the way I was really able to learn. And when it comes to single pin picking, you can actually see what's going on. So as I mentioned, at the, ba the, uh, the back side of the Bogota is the tension wrench, or doubles is that. So if I was going to come in here and insert this, I would hold tension and you just need slight tension. It's really kind of a featherweight tension and you can come in here and actually pick each individual pin stack. So I would highly recommend the Bogota tool set. And then also we have the Bogota Pi, which is a very slim profile kit. It's got four different picks as well as a double sided tension wrench. So you've got a, a single feeler pick to do single pin picking. You've got a double hump, a triple hump, and a quad hump for uh, raking locks. So what's great about these two is they're nice and flat. Um, I think this is a little bit more advanced than a standard uh, Bogota tool set. Some might disagree, but I tend to find that the, the traditional two-piece Bogota tool set is a little easier to learn with. Um, but these are great because they still do have a pretty good purchase area on the Bogota pies when you're grabbing these. So a couple of quick things on uh, what you need to pick locks as a beginner. 
All right, so that's all we have for questions today on gear tasting. Uh, one thing I wanted to do kind of for the gear segment is to talk about the rack system that you see behind you that I'm sure you're all kind of wondering about. We get a lot of questions on what this is and what we do with it. So obviously it's a way for us to store everything on, but I've actually been out here now that it's a little cooler in Texas, I've been reorganizing everything on the shelf. I've been trying to look at things from a loadout perspective of what I'm doing, what activity is going on. So am I hiking, am I climbing, am I backpacking, am I going to a shooting class? So I've kind of been looking at the different loadouts that I would wear and have for those different situations and trying to look at what I would, not only what I would take, but um, how that would look at laid out in, in a quick, easy to grab system. So that's kind of the purpose of what I've been doing. And as I develop that more, I'm going to share it on gear tasting. It's kind of the perfect outlet to do that. Um, so these rack systems were purchased from Lowe's a couple years ago. I don't know if they still have those or not, but um, one thing I like about it is they have these metal racks on the top of them, which makes hanging stuff from them, like the clothing and belts and harnesses and things, um, and plate carriers a lot easier than, than anything I can think of, honestly. It's better than a clothes rack or something like that. So, um, and then the top is great for storing packs and things like that. Bottom, I've kind of got some kit bags with different stuff in them, as well as been kind of labeling stuff into boxes. My OCD kicking in is, I like everything labeled. I like to know where stuff is. So. Um, this rack system has been great for that. So as I continue this, I'll share it on gear tasting. And you know, if you guys have any questions about what you're seeing back there or questions about anything in particular that you'd like me to answer, use the pound tag gear tasting on any of the social networks and we will find those questions and highlight them here on gear tasting. Thanks for watching.